From CBS News Bay Area, this is the Afternoon Edition. And right now in the Afternoon Edition, we continue our coverage on the passing of Dianne Feinstein, the former mayor of San Francisco and the longtime U.S. Senator. Good afternoon, I'm Ryan Yamamoto. She was a trailblazer, an icon, a true matriarch for the city of San Francisco and the entire Bay Area, passing away at the age of 90 years old. For more on her legacy, here's Skylar Henry. Dianne Feinstein served in the U.S. Senate longer than any woman in American history. Along the way, the California Democrat took up wide-ranging causes, including LGBTQ rights, the environment, and gun laws. We have to come to grips in America with our love affair with weapons. Joe Biden, who was Senate Judiciary Chairman at the time, credited Feinstein's leadership in sponsoring the 1994 federal assault weapons ban. She went out and did something that was a product of an incredible amount of work. In the aftermath of the September 11th attacks, Feinstein spearheaded a six-year review of the CIA's controversial detention and interrogation program. If you were ordered by the president to restart the CIA's use of enhanced interrogation techniques that fall outside of the Army Field Manual. Would you comply? The San Francisco native was first elected to the city's Board of Supervisors in 1969 and ran unsuccessfully for mayor twice. Feinstein became the city's acting mayor under tragic circumstances after the 1978 assassination of Mayor George Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk. Following a failed run for California governor, she won a special election for a Senate seat in 1992. Five additional terms followed. In 2018, Feinstein came under criticism during hearings on the Supreme Court nomination of Brett Kavanaugh. It was revealed the senator initially had not disclosed a letter she received detailing sexual allegations against Kavanaugh. I did what I believe was right. Feinstein later embraced President Biden's nomination of Ketanji Brown Jackson, who became the first African-American female Supreme Court justice. I am very proud to support her nomination. At age 89, Feinstein announced she would retire at the end of her term in 2024. She's a legend. She was able to convince people on both sides of the aisle to go along with her on issue after issue after issue. As she announced her plans, Feinstein tweeted, quote, even with a divided Congress, we can still pass bills that will improve lives. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. And the people of San Francisco experienced the heart, the power, and the influence of Senator Feinstein firsthand. Sean Chittness is live outside her home at Pacific Heights with reaction from San Franciscans. Sean. Well, Ryan, we are watching more people continue to come to this location, leave flowers and cards, wanting to show their respects, pay tribute to her. And as you know, this is a very public setup that we have here next to her home in Pacific Heights. The Lion Street steps that go all the way up, many people using it just to exercise or enjoy the scene, but clearly some people wanting to be here and to leave some sort of token to say thank you to the senator. Those who passed by this location this morning said that they specifically wanted to celebrate all that Senator Dianne Feinstein did for them locally and as someone who was serving the state in Congress. That includes included how she helped people to see the roles women could take on in politics. We also heard from one woman who came here to leave flowers and a card because as a member of the LGBTQ community and someone who is passionate about the environment, she felt seen by the senator. During that time, I thought, well, there's somebody out there for us, right? Someone that's going to protect us regardless. And, um, and so ever since then, I've always followed her and I always voted for her and the conservations that she did and, you know, every, everything that she did, she was just phenomenal. And being a woman at that time and having the strength to continue and do and be who she is and was. And another woman we had the chance to speak to this morning is a neighbor in the area. She told a story about getting to meet the senator right here at this location in 2016 with her young son. It was a rare opportunity, she says, because the senator did not spend that much time at this location. And so she was grateful that she had the chance to spend time with the senator along with her son. We expect more people will be coming by and leaving flowers throughout the day as this remains a busy spot. Ryan, back to you. Yeah, definitely. Lots of memories, lots of thanks and gratitude. Thank you very much, Sean Chitness, reporting live from Pacific Heights. Well, the assassination of San Francisco Mayor George Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk back in 1978 propelled Diane Feinstein into the national spotlight. 
Here was that heartbreaking announcement. Both Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Harvey Milk have been shot and killed. The At the time, Feinstein was serving as president of the Board of Supervisors and was thrusted into the mayoral position, where she was widely credited with becoming the calming voice of the city needed during a dark time. And Feinstein went on to serve as mayor of San Francisco from 1978 to 1988. The current mayor, London Breed, spoke about the life and legacy of Diane Feinstein at City Hall. She led with courage. She worked hard for the city. She was a beacon of hope and inspiration during a very dark and tragic time, which cemented, cemented her legacy as an extraordinary leader for our city and for our country. Dianne Feinstein never stopped being mayor. She was mayor in San Francisco for about 10 years before she became our senator. And I want to just talk about what she meant to San Francisco as a mayor, leading us through tragedy during a dark time, focusing on the important things that matter to communities, that matter to our city, pushing policies and legislation, and bringing excitement and joy. Growing up in San Francisco, she was always someone we looked up to, so much so that when she ran for senator, we helped in her campaign, I remember doing the envelopes and doing whatever it took. She was the first woman to really step out and to do this extraordinary work, both as president of the Board of Supervisors, as mayor of San Francisco, as the senator for the state of California. And just last night, she was on the Senate floor casting votes because she truly believed in doing her duty being an extraordinary public servant, and it is clear that she cared about making a difference in the lives of so many. We also heard from State Senator Scott Weiner of San Francisco, who says Feinstein also made her mark during the AIDS crisis, becoming a strong voice and an ally for the city's gay community. She explicitly and directly campaigned for, for, for gay votes. She campaigned in the community. That was, I don't, I think for a straight politician may have been the first time. And she was there in the 60s campaigning, asking for gay votes. As mayor, when HIV was decimating our community and there was literally a mass die off of gay men, uh, she was willing on the advice of public health experts and community leaders to step up and, and just deeply invest resources in San Francisco's response to this health crisis at a time when the federal government was missing in action and to the point where San Francisco, just San Francisco was spending more in HIV response than the entire federal government. And coming up, we will continue our coverage on the passing of Senator Dianne Feinstein. We'll be right back. Do you envision any problems as being a young woman president of the Board of Supervisors? No, I think it's going to be very enjoyable. And I think the people of San Francisco will enjoy having a woman presiding. I think I'll be able to work efficiently and effectively with the board. Uh, they've all given me their, their support. And I think you're going to find that it's going to be a very interesting and very productive two years.